What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and today I'm joined by the third place finisher at the 2020 British Grand Prix. I'm pleased to welcome Mark Hector to Desktop Bodybuilding. Mark, welcome. Thank you for having me on your podcast. Mate, it's an absolute pleasure. And I told you actually before this interview as well, like you have my favorite physique in the IFB Pro League right now, which is obviously a massive compliment to someone, you know, that's only just done their first pro show just recently and made their pro debut. But man, you made a massive impact on not only myself, but a lot of people I know as well. I mean, I've sent, you know, private messages to other, you know, mates that I'm bodybuilders, bodybuilding friends with, I guess you'd say. And they're just like, yeah, I know he's crazy. He's got my favorite physique. I'm like, same, same. So you've definitely made an impact on a lot of people. Um, but a lot of it's, I suppose, to do with your like tiny, tiny waist and, you know, your flaring lats and everything that you've got going on in terms of your shape and the way you flow, I guess, in terms of your physique. I mean, have you always had that even from a younger age? Well, first of all, thank you very much for the kind words and the compliments what I've been going around. That's, yeah. That does mean a lot and I definitely do appreciate that. Um, in terms of my structure, I would say it's uh, genetic. So my dad had the trademark wide shoulders, small waist, um, big arms. Um, good sized chest and I think I've been blessed with having his genetics and just being able to transfer that into my training and it's just I think with me growing it's just made my waist look even more smaller but in terms of doing anything specific um, not really I do do my vacuums so I practice my vacuums uh, along with my ab routines and my obliques routine which is mainly like a daily thing when it comes to competition prep but generally it's a genetic thing with my waist yeah, and you've never worn a waist trainer? Never wore a waist trainer, no. Wow, that's crazy. You actually remind me a lot of, um, I don't know if you know the bodybuilder that used to, I think he competed back in the 90s, maybe even the late 80s, and his name's Brian Buchanan. Have you ever seen him before? Yes, I've, I've seen him, and there's quite a few people that's been making comparisons to him because he used to be called the wasp waist. Yeah. So he used to have that really tiny waist. So, yeah, I know about Brian Buchanan. And do you know what's funny? He actually lives in Perth, Australia, which a lot of people don't know, which is actually where I live. So, which is pretty crazy. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Small world. So how, exactly. How did you get into bodybuilding? What led you to, I suppose, start getting into training and then eventually start competing? So my background before bodybuilding was actually sprinting. So I was a hundred meters and 200 meters sprinter. Um, I got really good times from hundred and 200 meters. I think my best for the hundred meters was 10.7. Um, and then I, yeah, so then um, with my sprinting training, we then had to do some work in the gym. And I quite liked just being in the gym, lifting weights and seeing how my body was changing. Uh, but my training in the gym that time was more geared towards athletics. Um, I got good times and times what could get me to compete at national level. Um, but then I got a few little knee injuries where um, it kind of hindered me. And... I should have went down the route of training with an actual sprinting club, but I wanted to stay with my friends and I stayed with like a middle distance coach and it didn't really help me uh, moving forward in my own performance. So um, I think it was at 15, I actually started weight training in the garage and then 16, I was in the gym training and lifting weights. And I just really enjoyed it. I liked to see how my body was changing. It gave me focus. It gave me something like, okay, right. I want to have bigger arms. What can I do to try and get bigger arms? And it just, it gave me an outlet where I really enjoyed it. It was something different to what I used to do with being on the track. And I've just transferred that into, into bodybuilding. Absolutely. So you got that 10.7 that time, was that when you were 15? Yes, that was, um, no, that was when I was around, I competed under, I think it was under the 19 at that point. So I, I was still doing some athletics alongside my, my weight training. So I yep. competed up to around 18 yep. in athletics. So you, did you find the actual weight training helped your um, sprinting? It, it did help my, my sprinting, but then it came to a point where I wanted to lift heavier. I didn't want to hold back and be training for explosive speed. I wanted to be training to be putting on more muscle. And um, it came to a point where in athletics, if you've got to get those times, you've got to keep getting those times consistently. And that's something I wasn't getting. So I, I just wanted to be in the gym and train and lift weights. I had no intention of actually competing in bodybuilding because um, I didn't want to wear those chunks on stage. That wasn't something I wanted to do, but I had seen a few competitions 
and being from a competitive nature of athletics, it's very much individual sport. Although you have people who support you when you're training, like your coach or maybe your nutritionist, it's it's all down to you. And that's similar with bodybuilding. You step on the stage, it's all down to you. And I wanted that sort of buzz back. So that's why I decided, you know what? I've seen a few bodybuilding shows. I'm actually going to go and give this a go, give this a try. Yep. And at what age did you first compete and how old are you now? I'm 33 now and I first competed at 26. Oh, yeah. So you started reasonably late in terms of competing. I competed like when I was 16 or something. So you, you yeah. came to the competing side of things pretty late. So that's why your physique, you know, 33 is obviously still very young, but it looks so, so fresh. So um, that's obviously yeah. something that's definitely on your side. And you're going to have, you know, you're going to be probably one of these Dexter Jackson guys that com- is competing when they're 50, <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's definitely something on your side. But um, I suppose, how long have you been training seriously for, I suppose? was it Has it been since just before you was 26 when you're going really hard or...? Um, so I've, I've started training at 15 and I've always trained consistently from 15, even like in being in the gym, like four times a week. But I would say I probably when I got to around early twenties and around 20, 21, that's when I decided, you know what, this is what I enjoy doing. So I could be in the gym sometimes seven days a week because it's just what I really enjoy doing. It gave me the focus. Um, but I guess the main difference was when I did decide that I wasn't going to compete around sort of around 23 that's when i started to take the nutrition side of stuff more serious yeah. because before i probably eat like two three meals a day um i wasn't one of these people growing up thinking all right okay i'm training so i need to get these six seven meals in it was just i sort of just went with the flow and just um, wanted to enjoy it more than anything for sure now you're yeah. coached by abdullah who's the coach of mr olympia brandon curry who i've got an interview going up would have gone up just before this interview has gone up as well. And um, obviously, you know, he's, he's a guy that seems quite similar to yourself in terms of a very humble, nice dude. Now, do you talk to Brandon at all? Like, does he ever send you messages of encouragement or anything? Cause he seems like that sort of dude. Yeah. yeah so during this prep, uh, me and Brandon spoke quite a few times. So he's been giving me tips when, cause each day I send the checking video to Abdullah and um, Abdullah sometimes shows Brandon and Brandon will give me some feedback on, okay, we can tweak this pose try and do things a little bit different. When he knows that the prep's getting harder from conversations I've had with Abdullah, he would just give me some words of encouragement. And it's just really been a, a, a sound ear, someone to speak to, almost like a role model. So it's really been a breath of fresh air to be able to have Brandon Curry um, to give me advice, because he is Mr. Olympia and he's walked the walk. So that's been nice. But I've also had people like Rolly Winkler reach out to me as well, yeah. which has been nice. Yeah. And Martinez, so. Being with Abdullah, associated with boxing gym, it's definitely helped um, to open some doors to speak to these other names within the industry. Yep. Now let's talk about Oxygen Gym and obviously you going out there as well. Now I've seen photos of you out there. I don't know how, what, how long you've been out there before. Like what's your, I suppose your longest stint out there? Have you been out there multiple times? And I suppose what's the environment like there and what's it like, I suppose, as a pro bodybuilder training at, I suppose, the, the Middle East Mecca? So I've only actually been out there once. So I flew out in February of this year. Um, I had quite a tough decision to make where um, my job, so I worked a job, I worked to nine till five and my job could not be held for me if I was going to go out to Oxygen Gym for a period of more than two weeks. So I made a difficult decision of actually leaving my job. Um, didn't really have a major source of income of what I was going to do when I got out there, but I just know that the opportunity was there to work with Abdullah. He believed in me. Um, Badr also believed in me. And I just made the step. I thought, if I really want to take this seriously and get to the next level, I need to be working with the coach, Abdullah, day in, day out at Oxygen Gym. So I was actually out there for six weeks. And then Corona hit, pandemic. And um, it wasn't ideal at all. And with everything that was going on, I made the decision to then come back to the UK and just continue with my prep because my initial goal was to compete at the British Grand Prix, which should have been in May. And then from there, was going to be a pro. Both of those shows were cancelled due to corona. So um, continued at home, still do my training, still follow the food plan that was set by Abdullah. And the goal was just to hopefully at some point still compete this year. But being out at Oxygen Gym is, is perfect. For me, um, there was no distractions. It was training, eating, sleeping. Um, Abdullah actually trained with me as well. So as a coach, he likes to be able to walk the walk that the athletes do as well. So my sessions were the same sessions as his. Um, we pushed each other. Um, 
he would look at my physique and say, all right, okay, right, you need a bit more here on your back. So this is the exercise we're going to do to target that. And they would always have an explanation of why we're doing training a certain way. And that was really, really good. And the environment I was in the gym because I've never seen equipment like that at all. It's like you go to like Disney World and you see all these different kit and all these different champions. It's just extra motivation because it's like, wow, I'm actually here. And because I was putting so much into it, like leaving my family, I've so got two young children, leaving my children, leaving my job. Um, this was, it was almost like, if I'm going to do it, it's got to be now. And I was just there to try and improve and be the best version of me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I suppose, do you feel that little bit extra motivation, I suppose, like going out there when you're leaving your family behind? Because I know myself, I've got, you know, two of my own kids. My partner has two older kids. So we've got four kids in the house, you know, all the time. Yeah. I know I'd feel like if I'm out there, I better be working hard, you know? Yeah, that's that's it. Especially with, with leaving my job. And I'm a person who very much likes security. So because I do have children, I want to know that I can be able to provide for them. And I've seen this as, right, I'm taking the biggest step of all. I've got, to, I've got to make this work. I've got, I've got to turn up to those sessions. If it's 10 reps, I've got to try and push through 11 reps because this is effectively going to determine my future. And that's something Abdullah would often say to me when we're training as well, um, especially before a big set, he would say, remember, this is your future. This is why you've left your family. And um, he definitely knew how to get the best out of me. Yeah, he definitely. definitely. Did. I know that would fire me up for sure. Um, so that's absolutely <laughs> massive. And now, did you go through financial struggles going out there, like with your family? Because, you know, obviously you said the corona hit and then you had to come back six weeks later and you didn't obviously have a job. Was that a really tough time for you and your family? The, the worst the worst time, I would say, is actually when I come back from um, being out in Kuwait. So initially when I came back, because there was no nowhere open because I've got qualifications where I could be personal training, or working in sports development, nowhere was taking on jobs because everything's closed out. So it's come back and it's almost like, wow, okay, what do I do here? I remember speaking with my partner who's also an online coach and we put plans in place, right? Okay, we're in lockdown, what can we do to try and get people motivated? So we put together like a home transformation challenge. We've got people in, starting to get a bit of income in that way, but it still wasn't quite covering everything. But I've got the mindset of, what you put in is what you get out. So try and just stay positive despite what's going on. Don't let that have an impact on what your well-being is. So luckily things started to turn um, turn a page and I was able to put a few more online clients and my client base, the people who was with me before the pandemic, they stayed with me as well. So that definitely helped. Yeah, very cool. And now obviously you guys, I believe in the UK have gone back into lockdown now because that's why the yeah. British Grand Prix was pushed up so early. Now, obviously that show, you know, you really, that's where you, I suppose, you did your pro debut, but you, I think you placed, or debut, I always say that wrong and everyone bags me about it. <laughs> uh, you did that um, and you placed, it was sixth or seventh. Yeah, I placed seventh out in Spain. Yeah, and you definitely could have placed higher, but it was a very tough lineup. And then you really, I suppose, established yourself as a top three finisher, which previously in years past would have qualified you for the Olympia, which is, you know, an amazing thing in your second pro contest. And, um, you know, while it was mostly British bodybuilders, it was still a really good lineup. You had James Hollingshead winning and Regan Grimes. And then you had, you were beating guys like Samson Dowder who finished second in that same show last year. So you, you definitely made a name for yourself. Now, what's the plans going forward next year for you? So I would have loved to have done um, the remaining show, which is going to be next weekend. But I, it's came to a point where I know when my body's ready for that rest now. Um, finishing seventh and the pro debut and stack lineup, I was really happy with. And then coming third, it's almost like the icing on the cake. I'm ready to say, all right, I've achieved what I wanted to achieve for this year. So next year, the goal is to go out early next year to Kuwait, all being well with the pandemic and have a long off season with Abdullah because we've only had six weeks before and in six weeks we put on quite a lot of muscle. So I'm thinking if we can get a good four, five months off season in, in Kuwait, working with them daily, then we'll look to see what shows are available to then cut and hopefully get that Olympic qualification. Awesome. That's so cool. I cannot wait to see what happens. But I suppose, what's your situation now in the UK? Like, are you able to train and everything still? I assume you probably have a gym set up somewhere that you'd be able to access. Yeah, well, there's facilities if I really wanted to, but what I normally do generally after I finish competing, I'll take a little bit of a break. So right now, although it's in lockdown, it's kind of felt like a good time for myself personally. 
Yeah. So I'm going to have yeah. about two, three weeks off when I'm not actually training, just resting, let my body recover because I've been dieting um, two separate times this year. So my body really needs that mm-hmm. rest and that break. Um, I'm eating flexible at the moment, but I will go into a reverse diet um, where I'll start to increase my calories and look to actually get back into the gym. Lockdown is set for four weeks, so I'm hopefully after that period, it's, we get it all clear to get back into the gym and start doing some sort, some form of training. But my main aim is when I get out to Kuwait, hopefully in January, that's when the training level is really going to be taken up a notch. Awesome, man. I can't wait to see your physique, I suppose, over the next however many months next year. Is there any shows planned for the end of next year or is, I suppose, just wait and see what happens with the everything that's going on? Um, I think it's wait and see what, what happens with what's going on. But my main goal is to get to the Olympia for next year. Um, I'm guessing Olympia will be moved back to September. So it'll be a show before then. But my goal is to actually qualify by coming first. So ideally, I don't want to qualify on points. I want to actually win a show. So that's my next step, my next goal, to move from third and get into a show where I can actually come first in place um, so I can get that Olympic qualification. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on. Now, I want to give you a chance to thank uh, anyone you want to thank out there or any sponsors or anything like that as well, if you've got anyone. Yeah, so there's, I feel like there's quite a few people to thank, but definitely Abdullah, because he's really helped me so much in uh, realising my potential, bringing out the best in me. The two shows we've worked together, each show I've improved on. So thank you so much to Abdullah and Bada from Oxygen Gym as well. I've got to say a big thanks to him. I've got a friend called Reza who's helped me, sponsored me where he can. I don't actually have a supplement sponsor or clothing sponsor. So um, luckily for me, I've got a good support network of people yeah. who do mm-hmm. help me where they can. And also my partner as well, um, Kerry Sex, who's also IFBB Pro Bikini athlete. We support each other. Awesome. We help each other awesome. during training and prep as well. And I've just got a good circle of friends um, around. So friends who also compete. So like, there's I've got a mentor physique friend called Hader, um, Adrian, and my close immediate family. I've just got a good circle of people who I know that if I needed that support, it's there. So there's too many to thank. Yeah. But hopefully <laughs> those who I've missed out there would um, still know that I've still got them in the thoughts. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. If I was put on the spot like that as well, I'd be terrible at thanking anyone. I'd be like, oh, I've got, I've got my partner, I've got this person, I've got that person. So I totally understand that. But what you're saying from that is basically you're a supplement and a clothing sponsor free agent. So if I was definitely only one of those companies, man, I'd definitely be hitting you up. So if you do want to, I suppose, if anyone wants to hit you up, how do they contact you? So I'm on Instagram. My name is Mark underscore underscore Hector. And that is my main um, handle social media. So you can get me on that available most of the time awesome thank you so much mark i appreciate you coming on desktop bodybuilding that's mark hector the third place finisher in the 2020 british grand prix for mark hector and xavier wills we are out